Steph Curry and Nikola Jokic may seem like polar opposites on the basketball court. Curry is known for his unrivaled shooting ability, his range extending far beyond the three-point line, and his lightning-fast off-ball movement. Jokic, on the other hand, is a center who thrives on his elite court vision to make crisp passes, often setting up his teammates with ease from the low post. One breaks defenses with shooting and speed, while the other tears them apart with size and precision. But despite their outward differences, they exploit defenses in the same way. Both Curry and Jokic create constant pressure on the opposition by forcing defenders to make tough choices, opening up easy opportunities for their teammates, and consistently finding ways to break down even the best defensive schemes. We're going to break this into two categories. We're going to talk about attention and then exploiting that attention. Those are the two areas where I'm going to say Jokic and Curry use the exact same concepts to lead their teams to greatness. Let's go. We're going to begin with Steph. So the first thing we're trying to determine is the attention. So can these two players, in particular right now, can Steph, can he attract attention in a way that is unique from his competitors? If we can see ridiculous shots like this, where he's off balance, being chased out, and is still is able to hit a three. I'm going to argue there are two things that lead to the dramatic attention that Steph receives. One is simply his statistics, which we're going to go over in a second. And two is the mystique, the like the hype that surrounds Steph as this legendary shooter, has this mystique, this aura about him. And we would be delusional if we didn't talk and act like coaches didn't game plan differently because Steph has this mystique about them. He definitely does, and it definitely affects the game. Steph represents essentially the single most efficient player with high volume that the NBA has ever seen. The first thing that needs to command attention is you have to have high volume. You have to be willing to shoot the ball with frequency, and I would describe it as you have to be willing to shoot quote-unquote bad shots, which is what we see right here. This is objectively a shot that I would tell high school kids, if you shoot this, I'm going to bench you. Like that's, that's what I would tell them. He shoots 9.2 threes per game. That is number one in history history and no one else has done this no one else has attempted to command the same attention that Steph has and then pairing that not only does he shoot the ball with extremely high volume he hits it with 42.6 which is number 12 all time that is unbelievable given what his volume is the volume of 9.2 means that you're shooting what people would claim as bad shots and you're still hitting them with unbelievable efficiency he shoots four more threes a game than anyone above him on that list of 42.6%, which means that is almost double. So he is shooting twice as many threes and still hitting them as a, at a 42 plus percent rate. That is absolutely unbelievable, and defenses have to respect that. And then we move to attention for Jokic. Because Jokic represents one of the far ends of the extreme to the human physique, as in he's bigger than essentially everyone else on the court, he is able to use that to make it so there are very few people, if anyone, in the NBA that can guard him one-on-one. -on -one. And because there are very few people that can guard him one-on-one, -on -one, if any they can guard him one-on-one, -on -one, it forces the defense to adjust specifically to who he is and give him more attention because they need to stop him in the first place. There are three players in the NBA that have above a 25% usage rate and above a 60 effective field goal percentage. Those are Giannis, Jokic, and LeBron. Jokic is shooting at a 61.2 effective field goal percentage, which means if you let him shoot every single shot, he is going to make 1.2 points per possession, above 1.2 points per possession, which is a lot. You can't allow that and still win the game. So defenses have to adjust to make sure he is not the one that is shooting every single possession. Then we get to my favorite aspect, which is the way that both of these players punish the attention that they receive. So first off, we're looking at Steph. The biggest threat that Steph has is you have to guard him close anywhere near the perimeter. So anytime Steph is moving around, headed towards the perimeter, you have to be worried about him. So here we can see the defenders, both eyes on Steph. Steph is headed towards the three-point line. And because this threat is so high, essentially you have three players that are gambling and paying attention to Steph, which leaves open players down low and 
open shots for other Golden State Warriors. And then one of the more famous clips that we've seen is Steph attacking Rudy Gobert. A lot of people just see the end result. Oh, it looks silly. Steph or Rudy Gobert trying to stay with Steph. But they don't think about why it occurred in the first place. So as this ball screen is occurring right here, why does the Jazz feel the compulsion to switch? It's because what Steph did right there. Okay? As he comes off this ball screen, the first thing he does is he pump fakes and he essentially shows his eyes that he looks like he's going to shoot. Okay? The Jazz understand this is a major threat and they need to make sure they have a hand in his face. So Rudy Gobert feels, essentially it's the game plan, the coaching staff and Rudy feel like they have to switch this to make sure Steph has a hand in his face. So then you obviously get a huge mismatch, and the idea that you have to worry so much by him in the three-point line makes it so you can't have bigs that can stay close to him because the threat on the perimeter is so high. And so while obviously this is a highlight to a layup, the threat of Steph's three is what led to that whole situation developing and then its conclusion as well. But then my absolute favorite of this, that I cannot overstate how beautiful this is, is Steve Kerr understands so well the attention that Steph gets. He literally built a system that was built on exploiting that attention. We watching, we're watching Steph off ball right here. As Steph comes across these screens, the defenders are going to worry about it because he's such a threat even without the ball. When the defenders react to it, that leaves the player that the defender was guarding uncovered and he simply goes into open space. Steph makes number two pull up and that gives another dunk despite Steph not even touching or coming near the ball. The whole Golden State system with Draymond as the post player allows him to essentially, they do this over and over again, trying to exploit the attention that Steph and Clay receive formerly. Again, we can see that Steph is roaming without the ball, and we have essentially being trailed immediately, and the defense is immediately worried about it. What happens? Two players go with Steph because they're worried about a pass he literally could not even, frankly, receive. Couldn't go through this player. They're worried about him coming off another screen. It leaves players open on the inside and an easy pass to an easy bucket again for Golden State. Steph's attention leads to so many open shots for Golden State. They run their offense predicated on this system and it works unbelievably well. <laughs> the attention of him not even coming off the screen leads to a Kavon Looney dunk right there. Then to Jokic, we see the exact same concept. He receives attention from the defense. The double comes because he's such an efficient post player. And he is able to capitalize on these mistakes at, frankly, probably the best level that anyone ever has in the NBA. He's able to essentially find the open pass. And a great pass right to his chest off the bounce leads to a wide open three. We can see Jokic again. The OKC team is going small. They essentially don't have a real post player, and so they're having to shift over. They're having to shift over in a form of zone where SGA pulls up this way. And so we have gaps, essentially, as they're trying to load towards Jokic, and Jokic is able to find those gaps with unbelievable efficiency as he passes the ball into Aaron Gordon. In all these clips, we see tremendous attention being applied to Jokic. Because there's so much attention, it gives him opportunity to exploit it. Frankly, he'd probably be able to exploit it regardless. But because this double comes, there was a lapse in the defense. There is an opening somewhere. And he makes the complicated pass behind his back to a beautiful wide open cutting player. With both Steph and Jokic, you give them attention. You are trading something off. And they both penalize you at an unbelievably high level. And so these two greats use the concept of attracting attention and then punishing attention to an unbelievably efficient level, and they do it better than most in the game. Maybe the two best in the game, possibly. And I think this concept has broader applications to the rest of life. If we think in terms of, let's say, the NFL. In the NFL, if you have a dominant wide receiver, you have to give him more attention on defense and that gives other receivers opportunities to be open. Let's say MMA. 
the attention that you give to uh, efficient wrestlers and their game changes how effective you are in your style. Because you have to give so much attention to their ground game, it affects how effective you're able to be on the feet, as we saw with like Connor versus Habib or Sean O'Malley versus Marab. And then finally, in life, NVIDIA recently has had absolutely skyrocketing market. And why is that? It's because they're able to do something that no one else can. They have the attention for creating a processor chip that no one else on earth can do it as eff effectively and efficiently as they can. And because of that, they capitalize on it by making a lot of money. Okay, so not only does this concept of attracting attention apply in basketball, but it applies in other sports and in life as well. If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. But most importantly, have a blessed rest of your day.